Hands everybody, hack it. Hey, Dean. Yeah. <laughs> tis I. Tis I? Tis I. What's the tis I? That's from legitimate theater. Tis I. Legitimate theater? Yeah, yeah. Before I was in legitimate theater, if you say Buddy Hackett, I would say, yeah, that's me. But now, with the training of legitimate theater, with the aplomb, with the niceties therein, I give a little half bow. Tis I. Well, why don't you give a full bow? Because I'll blow the pants. Oh! <laughs> I have legitimate theater, but I got a full season there, you know. Yeah, let's, let's sit down. Okay. Huh? And I just want to speak to you a while, you know. Okay, we might as well speak about something, because the only thing we rehearsed is sitting down. <laughs> well, you let's chit-chat about the, the anything you want All to. All right, I'm going to tell you what happened about something. You know, was you ever in a play? No, I've never been in a play. Well, let me tell you a few stories about plays, right? You want to know the first job I had in a play? Mm -hmm. I had a part, and it was a Civil War story. And I'm supposed to say, I walk in and I salute the general there and I say, sir, and then there's a noise of a cannon shot. And I say, hark, I hear the cannons roar, which is not my type of, uh, you know, that's not my, you know, in my old neighborhood, you yell hark, they hit you in the head with a bottle. <laughs> I wasn't raised in Sherwood Forest, in Sherwood Forest, hark, tra-la, hark, it's hark. <laughs> so I, I gotta do, you know, like, hark, I hear the cannons roar. When, so now, we had one of these stage managers. I don't know if you ever meet them. In legitimate theater, you know, they got kind of people, you're not too sure about them, you know? Mm. They, uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, rumors around that they're not regular. <laughs> and uh, maybe, but we had a stage manager. When I used to say this, sir, then he used to simulate the noise of the cannon. And he would go like this, sound of the cannon shot. <laughs> Then I would say, hark, I hear the cannons roar. So now we rehearse three and a half weeks, and every day we rehearse it five times a day, and I he keep hearing him go, sound of the cannon shot. <laughs> now, opening night, the Schubert Theater in New Haven, right? Right. They had a real cannon shot, you know, but I never heard it. All I heard was, sound of the cannon. <laughs> now I walk out and I say, sir, and all of a sudden, boom. I said, what the heck was that? Now, that's a legit story. Now, you here. missed the heart? Yeah, well, I didn't hear it. You know, I thought I was really going to hear Sound of the Cannon. <laughs> Sound of the Cannon was busy backstage painting the goat or something. <laughs> so, yeah. So, now, one time, there was this. Did you ever see a movie, Desperate Hours? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was, oh, a, yeah. It was a play on Broadway first, Desperate Hours. So there's a scene where a couple of gangsters uh, take over a family and they hold them cowed, you know, and they got them, they're in their house with guns and all. So they open in Chicago, this company of Desperate Hours. And the first scene, the curtain goes up, it's about three minutes old, and you see the gangsters in these people's house, and the guy fires the pistol, boom! And he's not supposed to. So, you know, the dumb actors, instead of saying, oh, you nearly hit us, the father goes, ah! And he falls. Now, he's supposed to die in the third act. <laughs> now, the show is three minutes old, so the guy who fired the shot, fast thinking, he ad libs, maybe it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> so now the other gangster runs over to him and grabs him and he says, no, he's dead. <laughs> They had to bring down a curtain, and someone came out and made an announcement that there was a mistake, and they'll start over, which I don't know how good a night of theater that was, but anything like that ever happened with you? No, I've never been in a legit theater. I, I'm lucky I got here. <laughs> <laughs> theater, I don't know anything about theaters. No? No, I go to them once in a while. Mm, you know, one time, I'm talking about guns, it reminds me. I was a kid, I was in a pool room. You shoot pool? Oh, yeah. yeah. The pool rooms I'll talk about, the theaters, no. Yeah. So I was, in a, I was about 13, 14 years old, I was in a pool room and it got held up. And these gangsters come out, you know, and they, everybody hold up! So, everyone hold up. I was about 13, 14, all the other guys were about 18, 20. They frisk them, anyone didn't have any money, wham, they give them a shot in the face, you know? So I was scared they are gonna shake me down. I didn't have a dime, you know, I was a starving kid, you know, runny nose and all like that. I think whenever you starve, your nose runs. So, <laughs> so, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't 
know, but that was in my neighborhood. It looked, it looked stupid. If you had enough to eat, you certainly could have a Kleenex. So, anyway, I was in this, uh, in the pool room, and they're holding up, and after they collect from everybody, they say, now we're gonna get out of here, they're gonna take a hostage. So I was about the youngest, so they say, you, come with us. At which point, my mind moved faster than it's ever moved since. I said, oh boy, can I drive? They said, you stay, you come. <laughs> I start to get different kind of jobs after that. You know, I was... What are the odd jobs that you did have? Well, I worked in a pocketbook factory, turning handles. That was hard. You know, they have handles on women's purses. When they... S you don't know too much about women's purses, you know? But... Hark! <laughs> 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 